So here we go, Mezco, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 112th Collective. Uh, nobody prepared me for just how big this box was going to be. I picked this up yesterday because I had it delivered to uh, Walgreens by my job because FedEx around me is pretty notorious about needing an in-person signature and since, first of all, I'm not home when they're delivering stuff, I'm always at work. And even if I am home, they don't even like to knock anyway, so like I don't know that they're even here. So you can divert things to the Walgreens. I always do it for the one that's like not even a minute up the road from my job. That way I can just go pick it up after work or whatever. And so that's what we're looking at here. I picked this up yesterday. I'm intimidated. Like there's so much going on here. What am I gonna do with this? What am I doing with my life? Anyway, let's get started. So that outer overlay comes out and you just see what the actual box looks like. Maybe a little redundant, like the point of a slip cover without like a window like some mezco figures have that window where you can actually see the figure when you take the slip cover off but oh eh, whatever this is still cool several different trays in the package so this is the one with like a bunch of the weapons and the stands and pretty much everything you could ever want it's right here two separate trays for two turtles a piece um even more in the way of like hands weapons all that kind of stuff and here's the other one i will say for a product like this where it's high dollar and uh, premium collector format whatever you want to call it mezco make sure you can get to everything the packaging and everything is always nice with these everything's where it needs to be it's easy to get to i say that and i see that i have an accessory missing no no i don't it's on the bottom we're good but yeah i was going to say that they package everything neatly so you can get to what you need to get to without too much hassle so let's get to it. So here's the four of them out of box, just as they were in the package. I didn't switch heads or hands or any of that kind of stuff yet. I just kind of moved them all around just to test the joints out and see how they worked. And most of them work great. I mean, these figures do feel nice. They have a solid enough plastic, but it's pliable and soft enough to where it's going to not feel like it's a struggle to move them. But once you do move them, they're gonna hold their pulse. So I do like that. If you're familiar with Mezco, it is a more solid feeling plastic. It's not quite a, uh, you know, we're not talking like SH Figure Arts or Rebel Tech or anything like that, where it's like really hard, but also really lightweight plastic. But there is a little more weight to these compared to something like an import, like a Dragon Ball Z or some kind of SH Figure Art in the similar kind of a scale. All right, so as far as articulation goes, I figure we can look at one turtle because it kind of goes across the board for all four of them. They're all very, very similar. So I'm picking my favorite, Michelangelo. He's up front. Uh, one thing to note is that they will have slight differences just down to the fact that they are slightly different sizes. So like, you know, you can tell um, when you saw them lined up before, some are slightly taller, some are shorter, some are a little stockier, some are leaner. So just keep that in mind. Start from the top. You got a ball joint from the head to the neck and another ball joint from the neck to the body. So you're going to get a lot of nice range out of that. It's going to be able to look down about that far, which is really good up about this far, just standing straight up, which is also quite nice. Get some good side to side tilting going on there. And of course, obviously a swivel. Another point of articulation on the head is the headband, which actually the bandana twists around. That's because this pops out and you're able to replace it with like a longer, more flowing one, if that's what you wanna do. So we'll get to all that later. At the shoulder, spins all the way around, although you may encounter the shell, um, giving it a little bit of uh, resistance when you go like around the back. So you probably will have to move the arm out a little bit. Be able to get about 90 degrees up, straight up like that. But obviously if you want it to angle up above more, you can do that too, just by you know, spin in the arm. Do get a bicep swivel, although it's tight, but it works. It's not like resisting me or anything. Double jointed elbow, which is very, very nice. You'll see you get a good range of motion. Like that's, I mean, for arms that look like this, that's pretty good in my opinion. So you get a swivel at the wrist and as well as where the wrist pops into the uh, hand itself. So this again is just a big ball joint where you can pop the hands on and off and you'll get a hinge out of that as well. So you will be able to manipulate the hands at the wrist as well as at the base of the arm there. So you can twist it around, you can hinge it, you can do whatever you want. You get some pretty good movement out of these. And the hands feel secure because the wrists are so big. The ball joints are big enough to the point where they don't feel like they're gonna get loose or anything, so that's great. Might be tough to see, but you can see underneath his arm there and before you get to the base of the body there is a little bit of a joint that i believe will give you a little bit of side to side although with michelangelo it's tough that uh, he might be just kind of stuck you can see him moving slightly but it's not like a great deal of motion in there so don't count on too much uh, torso articulation because the shell is pretty hard on both sides front and back so it's going to be tough to kind of like move around that basically articulation does get better when you get to the legs you have uh, little ball joints and a t-joint there underneath which admittedly i don't love the ball joints system because i feel like they could get loose or potentially um snap i mean hopefully they don't it doesn't feel like it's in danger of doing that when i move it around but just 
you know, be careful is all I'm saying. You also get a swivel at the upper thigh, which works pretty nicely. Double jointed knee, which is a pretty good amount of range. It's not quite as much as the arm gets, but that's because his lower leg is so stocky. Belt falling off, doing all this on camera. Mikey, what are you doing to me? I can already tell this is what I'm gonna run into if I try and animate these figures. At the ankle, you're pretty limited. You're not gonna get much forward movement out of the ankle. Like that's probably about as far as you can get. So it's pretty much gonna be like a straight kind of perpendicular angle here, what you got going on. But you can bend it a little out. So if you're doing like kicking poses, you will be able to have him kick with the top of his foot. You do make up for it a little bit with a uh, rocker joint in there. So you can do a decent amount of range. So I struggle to think of turtle figures in general though that have like awesome ankle articulation. 112 Collective Mezco stuff has not always been known for its range of ankle articulation. I'm kind of not surprised by that. Now one of the main draws of Mezco's 112th Collective is the cloth goods that come with the figures. Now the turtles, obviously you can tell, are mostly just straight up plastic, but you do get a little bit of cloth embellishments on here. Uh, namely the belts are, they're like a, they feel like a leathery strap material. It's almost like a a shoe strap or something like that that you might expect. Um, they are nicely done. It looks like they're stitched together really cleanly. And as I look, it looks like underneath this part of the belt, they're just on there loosely, by the way. They're not like glued to the figures or anything. It does look like there's another potential point of movement on the inside, uh, similar to what I showed like up above in the top part of the torso. So that may actually be more articulation than I realized it had. But yeah, these belts are just loosely fitted on the figure, which means it could just fall off, especially if you're dealing with one of the turtles that doesn't have like the shoulder straps or anything like that. So that's just something to be aware of. He does have these elastic bands that go around his uh, elbows and his knees that connect to these kind of like rubbery plastic um, pad parts of them. These work well. I would be a little afraid over time that they may, you know, wear out. Their elasticity might fade out and, you know, they might get easy to kind of slide up and down the arm. But for now, they're great. It doesn't seem like there's any stressing going on in terms of, like, you know, pulling on this part of the edge of the pad or anything like that. I would also be concerned with that in the future. Like, if you pull a little too far, it may break this edge part of the pad here. So... I'm gonna be careful, you should be too. All right, now that we got the articulation taken care of, for the rest of the video, uh, we're gonna look at each turtle individually. There's gonna be a lot to talk about, so I'm gonna leave some time codes in a second. You can skip to whichever turtle you're the most interested in, or you can leave the whole video playing and watch every single thing all at once. And uh, you know, we'll reconnect at the end. What do you say, hey? Let it be noted that there is a little instruction sheet in here that tells you how to use some of the weapon effects and everything. So that's pretty cool if you can't figure out like what one of these 10,000 freaking accessories is, this will show you and it'll show you how to use it. So I do like this. So starting up with Leonardo, he's got a couple different head sculpts as you can see. This is what I was talking about before, the uh, bandana piece that you can take out and plug in. It's, uh, this is a longer, more flowy one compared to the shorter one that's in his head. We'll get a look at that. And he's got several different hands here. Now, some of them are pairs and some of them are uh, not quite matching up. So like as you look at these, these are you know gripping hands that probably will come in handy when he wants to hold his katanas and stuff. But then you look at these and these have like openings, but they're very thin and uh, the finger positioning is not the same on them. So something tells me these are just kind of like for holding, you know, maybe throwing stars or some of his smaller accessories. And then over here, obviously, you've got kind of like the gesturing open hands, and then you've got more uh, gripping hands. Now this, again, is a pretty narrow grip. Circular, though. And then this is um, almost like a thumbs up, but I think it's meant for holding something small. I don't know what any of this is yet. We haven't looked. So once again, here's the head sculpt out of the box. Very, very nice. Pretty reminiscent of the expression on the original Playmates where like the one side of his mouth is open wider than the other one. I like that, I think that's cool. And here's kind of an angrier battle ready head. And you can see that I plugged the longer headband into that, which I do like, and you can like swivel it around. So if you wanna do an action poses or blowing in the wind, that's an option that's open to you. And here's the last head, which is just a very kind of stern, straight faced expression. Uh, befitting of the leader of the turtles. I would have liked to see like at least one kind of like either smirking or smiling head Because you know, let's face it Leonardo while he is a ninja turtle He is also a teenager and he has been shown in many different iterations of the turtles to also enjoy himself a little good time now And then he's a big freaking nerd in the 2012 series He does live-action role play and watches like Star Trek or whatever the fake version of Star Trek is in that so would have been nice to get a little smiling head for him. But yeah, beyond that, I popped the original head back on him. And one thing I want to draw attention to here is that the coloring on these figures is beautiful. The paintwork obviously is exceptional as well, but I mean just like the color green that they chose for Leonardo, the contrast against the brown and the, 
you know, dark yellow of the shell. Like this is a really, really striking looking figure. And then they got the brown with all the shading and stuff in the shell itself. As I just look at this, the more I look at it, especially like, you know, kind of up close, the more I can appreciate the level of detail they put into it. So. Good on you, Mesco. Nice work. Something else that I do really enjoy is that each turtle gets his own, like, unique accessories, as well as there's shared accessories that go uh, across all of them, to where they each come with, like, all the same kind of thing. So I'm going to do the unique accessories with each turtle, and then we'll talk about the shared ones uh, at the end. How's that sound? Good? Yeah, I thought you'd like that. So it's Mesco, so you're obviously getting soft goods in here. So this is one of the pieces of soft goods that comes with the Leonardo. Um, it's kind of just like a, you know, wired cloth black cloak i mean kind of luke skywalker return of the jedi looking um actually you know what it kind of reminds me of the beginning of the uh the cg movie i think it's 07 or 08 but leo wears that when he's like in the uh in the jungle in like central america or wherever he is but it's cool i mean i don't know if this is my mind's eye version of leonardo he also comes with a red scarf thing which we'll take a look so i don't know if it goes like that kind of looks like the shadow but um it's interesting. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's like, once again, it's not like my mind's eye version of Leonardo, but it is all wired. So you can have the cape flowing out. You can have the scarf thing kind of blowing off to one side and you will get some nice poses out of it. But like I said, you know, I don't know if this is going to be what I go for. Although then again, I did just talk about how Leonardo's a big nerd and it's into the live action role play. So maybe this is his fantasy character or something. I don't know. All right, so here's where there's gonna be a strike against the figure. Trying to get these sword sheaths into these little like uh, holders that are sewn onto the back of the belt. That's like a next level pain in the ass right there because the thread, the stitching, runs like through here, which means there's gonna be strings like poking kind of like across the path of where you need these sword sheaths to go. So I was trying to like carefully twist it in while also like putting in the end of like one of these twist ties to try and clear the string out of the way and like it took entirely too long. I would have liked to have seen them do something a little less complicated. Like I mean they could have just made the back of the belt thicker and just put like a little extra strap over top of it that would have fit both of these. I think that would have been fine. But um, I will say it does look nice. You can tell where like some of the threading on mine is starting to get a little loose just because of me trying to sit there and fight with it through the whole thing. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be like a one-time assembly thing for me, I think. That all said though, he does look really nice with the, uh, the swords on his back. I do like how this looks. I'm used to them being over his right shoulder and not his left, or at the very least, like kind of like one over each shoulder. So this is kind of jarring to look at, but other than that, I mean, that's just, I'll get used to it. It's just a minor little detail. And since we got them out, let's take a look at the swords in better detail. Uh, the blades are nice and straight. There's a little like uh, line carved into either side, which is nice. And uh, the handle has a lot of detailing on it. It's got the little indentations and the weathering and stuff, a lot of paint shading in there with little gold elements on the, uh, you know, the tip and like right where the blade meets the hilt. So that's cool. I really like that um, Mezco went the extra mile with the detail on the weapons. So now we got them. Double katanas, looking good. Got the sheets on his back, looking like he's ready to go into battle. I like this a lot. This is really, really cool. The hands pop off real easy on these. It goes all the way back to uh, their first Dark Knight Returns Batman figure, where the hands are like a softer, more like pliable plastic. They almost feel a little bit rubbery. So it's real easy to pop them on and off to the pegs and yeah, no issues whatsoever. Same goes for the heads. The heads pop on and off super easy. So yeah, I like this a lot. I pretty much like everything except for the design of putting the sheets into this back thing. Like I said, that was a pain. But everything else, really, really nice. And if you wanted like uh, two hands on the same sword, it is possible to do that. It might be a little more limiting just down to the fact that, um, you know, your range in the arms is gonna maybe be a little limited because of the hard shell in front of him, but you could still pull off some nice poses, I think. This is good. So here's something interesting. He comes with these uh, little claw things. Now, I have one on the open hand facing outwards, and I have one in the fist over on this side. Well, not the fist, but the uh, gripping hand on this side. So one's like a claw climber, and the other one I have is more of like, you know, spiked brass knucks. Uh, the reason is because the other open hand, this doesn't fit around it the same way. Kind of makes me wonder, what was Mezco's intention with this? So here's what I'm talking about. This is the first release of the NECA Mirage Comics Turtles. So if you got the first releases, they came with extra hands and a base and all this kind of stuff. And the extra hands they came with were the claw climbing ones. They were open with the, uh, you know, claws facing outward so they could like scale buildings with them. To the contrary, here is Sewer Samurai Leonardo from Super 7, which is basically like a, 
you know, let's call it an upgrade, a remaster of the old Playmates figure. So one of the things they gave him as a pack-in was a uh, set of these claw things that he can hold, but they kind of rest over the backs of his hands and they kind of extend out more like Wolverine claws in a way. If you want to be a freaking nerd, you can tell me it's actually Ultimate Sabretooth had four claws and not Wolverine. He only has three. Yeah, I know. I know. Quiet. So you could probably go either way with your Mezco Leonardo. You could make them more like claw climbers or offensive weapons, or you don't have to do anything with them. I just thought it was interesting that you got a couple different options for the same little accessory here. Do whatever you want. And here's one of his throwing blades in his hand. I like this. I mean, it's nicely fit in there. It's nice and snug, so it's not going to fall out. And uh, if you pair it up with the other hand, I think this hand is kind of meant for like holding the pizza slices, but it looks like he's, you know, aiming. Or he's like, hey man, you better sit down or you're gonna find one of these throwing blades right in your freaking face. Also for his swords, he does come with this little like motion swoosh accessory to make it look like he's swinging his sword. I don't know that I'll ever necessarily use it. I mean, it's pretty cool, but like, you know, for my purposes, it's just kind of something I don't personally need, but I can see it looking pretty cool in a display. And he also comes with this kind of like motion effect for the uh, throwing blades that he comes with. So you can see there's all three of them right there with like a little bit of uh, an arc to him. So it looks like he's just throwing them all at once. And that's pretty cool too. Again, not anything I'll probably use, but it does look good in a, you know, static display. All right, I figure I'll do my final thoughts on Leonardo and then I'll do like each turtle separately and then we'll comment on the whole set at the end of this whole thing. So Leonardo on his own is great. The only thing I don't like is that stupid way that they integrated the, uh, you know, the pocket things on the back of his belt strap to put the sheets into. It probably could have been handled better. In fact, a bunch of those other versions of Leonardo that you just saw did handle it much better. So. You know, I, I just think that was Mesco trying a little too hard to be a little too unique and they, you know, they, they stepped past the line of what could have just been fine on its own and just were like, we need to innovate. And then they just innovated something that didn't really work that well. A little minus points for that, I guess, but the rest of the figure is stellar. I really like it. The paint, the color, like I said, the accessories, all just top notch, great stuff. All right, let's move on. So almost forgot, before we move on, I got these little color-coded accessory things. They came in a big old set with like, I don't know, it was like 14 or 16 or whatever, like of these things, all different colors. So I'm like, blue, Leonardo. Boom, we're gonna put his accessories in here. That's gonna be what's up. All right, there's everything exclusive to Leonardo. Hands, weapons, accessories, all that kind of stuff. You can see here, I actually stuck the entire tray right in there too. So if I wanted to put the swords and whatever in there, I could. So nice work, just pop that closed. I think it'll close. Now it's going to embarrass me on camera by not closing. Now we got it. It's a little snug, but that's cool. That's everything. Leonardo, blue, how about it? All right, moving on to Michelangelo, who we saw earlier as the uh, kind of the crash test dummy for articulation and showing off the you know range that you can get out of these guys. Michelangelo, as I mentioned, my favorite of the four turtles. Doesn't mean he's the best. So for all y'all want to leave comments and all that stuff, actually, you know what? Leave your comments, engagement. But yes, Michelangelo is, uh, in my opinion, he's one of the most fun characters out of the whole franchise. And um, I think they captured that really well with everything you see here. It looks like you got your kind of two mismatch pairs over here. They got one that's like gripping and one that's more like tight grip with the thumbs up. You've got your like throwing slash pizza eating hand as well as a even tighter grip, like less thumbs up. Like we're talking like an Orange Cassidy thumbs up with this. I don't know what this is. Maybe we'll find out. As well as of course his open martial arts hands, his gesturing hands, whatever you want to call them, and his gripping hands probably for most of his weapons. So this was the head on him out of package. Once again, I think very Playmates inspired in terms of his expression, where he's got the one side of his mouth that's wider open and the other one that's basically shut. Um, I do like that. I think that's kind of a cool little throwback. So once again, we have the longer bandana that you can pop on and off to any of these heads. So if you prefer the longer one compared to the shorter one, you can do with that what you like. Here is a smiling head, which is, uh, I kind of see what they were going for, but I don't know, to me, this is a little bit it just makes him look like a really like old person, I think. I don't know, why does this remind me of like Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey or something, like where it's just lifeless and kind of weird. I don't know, the other head sculpts don't have that, so I think I'm gonna prefer those. So this is the one right here. This is like the freaking out, scared one. 
I really, really like this one a lot. This one is uh, a big improvement over the smiling one, in my opinion. Yeah, this might be the standout head sculpt for me. So just like Leonardo, Michelangelo has two pieces of soft goods clothing, because, you know, like I said, it's Mezco. Um, both of them in bags. Let's see what's up here. So here's the first one. It's just a straight bendy wire across, like, a torn up piece of cloth. I guess this is some kind of a cloak or something. So, like, I don't know what this is. It, like, I got it wrapped around his, like, neck right now, like some kind of a Batman cape or something, which I guess is kind of what it could be. I don't know. Somebody leave a comment. Tell me what this thing is. So the second piece of soft goods he comes with is a hoodie, like a zip up hoodie. It's a uh, bright orange, much like Michelangelo with like that neon, like kind of yellowish green Gatorade looking color. I like it. I think it's cool. Um, I don't know how it's going to fit on the figure. We'll find out. I already got the head and the hands taken off. My guess is that it just unzips. All right. So it seems like the zipper stops at the bottom, which means it probably just unzips just for the ease of being able to get it onto the figure, which let's see if ease of getting it onto the figure is even a sentence I should be saying. All right, yeah, this is actually really cool. Uh, this wasn't super difficult to put on once I got it off camera and could actually like do it. The zipper did like kind of, it got misaligned a little bit. So I had to like fight it back down and then like kind of hold this piece in place while I zipped it up. So that's something to be careful of on these really, really tiny, you know, soft goods. Like I said, I think Mezco could have got away with like printing a fake zipper on here and just making it like elastic or something, but got to hand it to him for detail. Another thing I did was actually took the belt off because it was, it was going to be tough to get this over the belt with like the shell and everything on it. So now that we got the belt off, we can take a look at it. So it looks like the way the belts are made is like, obviously you got your like stitched leather with some like pockets and everything in there. I don't know if these are functional pockets or if these are just kind of like, you know, for show. But on the insides, there's pieces of elastic to like hold them to the figure a little bit more securely, which I do like. So Michelangelo's, like I noticed, was the one that kind of slid down the easiest. But I don't think you'll have that problem with the other figures. Certainly not Leo and Don since they have the shoulder straps. But um, I think this will basically hold in place pretty nicely like once you get it situated. Yeah, pretty cool design. Hopefully it holds up. But yeah, the soft goods actually look really good on Michelangelo. They're a lot more... I don't know, it's a lot more form-fitting than Leonardo's. Like Leonardo's, I was having a little bit of difficulty with like the scarf piece, but Mikey, once you get it on, it's on, and that's good. There's actually a wire in the uh, hood part too. So like if you wanted to take the hood down and just, you know, kind of like crimp it with the wires, it'll stay down and look nice. And then obviously if you have the hood down, you can plug his bandana thing back in. So he, uh, yeah, it looks like he's good to go. On a little deep V. Half up, half down zipper. Go right ahead, do what you want. And once again, you get a tray of weapons with Michelangelo, just like you got with Leonardo. So let's pop this open. All right, we'll start here. Do you see this? Can you see this? Because I can't, and it's in my hand. This is like the smallest little throwing dagger thing that I've ever seen. Like we're talking about, this is the size of like that little vial thing that came with Batman 89, the Mezco figure, where like I, pretty much was certain I was gonna lose it if I didn't put it right back in the box. You get three of these. I think they can go into his belt, but like, would I even wanna risk doing that? But here's what we're talking about though. This is just straight up Playmates. Like, I love that they pretty much just took the Playmates uh, weapons, like the extra additional weapons that each of the original four turtles came with and just made really nice versions of them. And this thing, the little comma, as I maintained back in the day when I did my Super 7 reviews, I was like, this was always the one you wanted your turtles to have, because if you had a string and you tied it to the top of something and ran it to the bottom of something, they could slide right on down on these hooks. So it's not what I'm gonna be doing with Mezco, but you can. So for the record, those three little things do slide into Michelangelo's belt. There's that little three section pocket on the uh, front side. So, I mean, I guess you could put them there if you wanted to. I'm probably gonna take them right back out, but you know, honestly, they don't look bad. So here we have the nunchucks. They're on actual metal chains. They're painted really, really nicely. There's like a lot of uh, nice little detail in the wood grain and everything. The metal little caps on the tops and the bottoms of each piece are really nicely painted. The thing I like about this is this is actually a bendy wire in here. So if you wanted to pose them up in a certain way, you can definitely make that happen. I think they got the idea from JWF Intercontinental Championship Tournament when I did this same thing with Steve Blackman, where I took an old NECA Michelangelo's nunchucks, I ran a wire through them, and that way I was able to pose them the way I wanted it to be. So yeah, Mezco definitely confirmed JWF fans. Okay, Mezco, I see you. This is really, really good. Yeah, okay. This is really nice. 
I definitely like this. These might be the best nunchucks in my entire collection right now. So the nunchucks do fit into the little like pocket things on the back of his belt. However, I will say that it is not easy to do. It's not as tough as Leonardo's like sheaths going through the uh, things on the back of his straps there. But because of the way these nunchucks are, you'll see they have kind of like these wider studded things on the ends here. So in other words, when you fold the nunchucks up, if you try and push them both through at the same time, it's not really going to work. But doing it one at a time is going to be tough because of the wired chain. So the way that I did it was I ended up pushing it down through the top. But I didn't want to mess with it too much because I didn't want to like damage the, um, the wire inside the chain. So realistically, while I do appreciate that they went this extra step, I'm probably not going to leave these in there for any great length of time because I don't just want anything to happen with the nunchucks. And last but not least, he comes with these two awesome spinning effects. He does have two, which is great. And they come with these like handle pieces, basically. Uh, this very reminiscent of what Rebel Tech did. They had a separate handle piece that plugged in here. Uh, NECA did the same thing, except they actually had it where you would disassemble the uh, one piece of the regular nunchuck and then be able to put this on. Same concept, and it works great. What I like about this is because it's basically like double-sided, it enables you to plug it in whichever way you want, and depending on which way you plug it in is the way the nunchucks are gonna look like they're spinning. So in other words, if you go like this, he's spinning it clockwise from camera view, and if you go the other way around, obviously it's gonna be counterclockwise. So if you wanna have them like double back spinning or double front spinning, or if you're a huge nunchuck nerd and you wanna make it look like he's doing a particular thing, that's gonna be an option for you. Also, he comes with two. Now, that's never happened before. Every set of NECA cartoon turtles has come with one each, which is great because you do end up getting two eventually, or you know, more than two, I guess. But the Rebel Tech one, you only get one. So coming with two right out the gate, that's, that's what you need. All right, all right. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that a lot. Between these and the uh, nunchucks on actual like wires, this is basically begging to be animated by somebody who knows how to do stop motion animation. If you know anybody like that, leave a comment. Tell me who. It's the last accessory he comes with is this uh, Walkman with uh, headphones attached. It's like such a classic throwback to like, uh, you know, early 90s style Walkman that like, you know, me and my friends might have had back in the day. Tape player. It's got all the, uh, you know, buttons on there. So, you know, he's fast forward and rewinding to that perfect part of the song that he just wants to listen to over and over again. The headphones fit nicely on the figure too. Like I imagine you can use this for like every character, but he's got the orange ones. So I'm guessing this is Mikey's personal headset. All right, final thoughts on Michelangelo for the time being. I really, really like this figure a lot. No surprise to anybody probably, but uh, I like his skin color and like kind of the texturing and stuff they gave him. Um, the paint wash, maybe slightly heavy in some places. Like as I look at his arm, there's like a little bit going on here in the musculature. It's not like bad or, you know, I don't think it looks like wrong or ugly or anything, but it's definitely more noticeable on him than it is on Leonardo. But that said, I mean, that's not a problem for me. I do love that he comes with two of these nunchuck spinning accessories. These look great. I really, really like how they're done. I like how the regular nunchucks are done with the bendy wire and all the other accessories and everything look really, really nice too. I would say if there's one thing that I would probably like have changed, it would have been this smiling head. Maybe I would have just put teeth or something in there so he doesn't look quite as creepy, I guess. But other than that, uh, I really like the other head he comes with, kind of the shocked, scared expression, surprised. This one is great. Uh, the one stock out of the package, really great too. I like both of the bandana accessory parts, the long one and the short one. They're both awesome. I would say my only other minor little nitpick about this figure is the belt does slide off a little bit easy, but I mean, that's something you can work with. It's not that big a deal. So yeah, overall, love Michelangelo. He's great. So yeah. Got my color-coded thing, and god damn it. You know, I thought I was all smart buying the color-coded things. I'm like, I can finally use these, and they're going to come in handy. The Leonardo tray fits in there perfectly. Why wouldn't all the rest of them fit in there perfectly? Why indeed? All right, so I'll probably just end up taking this stuff out of the tray. All right, everything out of there now. There we go. I'm gonna just have to pop the tray back in the main part of the box, I guess. It's all empty. I even got those little tiny throwing dagger things out of there. Everything's bagged up in here nice. Yeah, him and Leonardo, looking good.
All right, moving on, Donatello, fresh out of the box. You'll notice first things first, he is a, uh, a darker skin tone than the other turtles. This goes back to like the early days of Playmates when they were kind of differentiating all the characters by giving them like different skin tones and stuff, as well as the different like headband, um, bandana colors and everything. Donatello, um, classically in the old Playmates line, was always like borderline like brown. Like I think a lot of the reproductions since then have been just straight up brown. So he kind of retains that here with this figure. Which I do like because it does differentiate them even further than just having the headbands be different colors. Um, having their skin tones and stuff be different too. And I know that some versions of the turtles have like taken that even a step further and had all four turtles be like a completely different species from each other. So it's interesting. It's pretty cool. As for the figure itself, obviously a lot of similarities, but his body type is uh, slightly taller, I believe, than Michael. Well, certainly taller than Michelangelo. Slightly taller than Leonardo as well. Um, but he retains kind of a thinner physique. So. I like that. You'll notice he also has the uh, shoulder strap on his belt, similar to how Leonardo, who had like the double strap with the big shoulder pad. Donatello's a little simpler. He's got just like the one shoulder strap with kind of like the loop thing going through it there. He's obviously a big fan of Hagar. The thing that I worry about is uh, he's got the bow staff holder thing on the back of his uh, strap. And if I learned anything from freaking Leonardo's uh, katana sheaths, that's gonna be a pain. So I'm not looking forward to that. But otherwise, yeah, the figure looks great. Now he actually kind of gets the short end of the stick as far as hands. He doesn't have as many pairs as his brothers do. Uh, he has his open kind of gesturing martial arts hands. He has his gripping hands here. And he also does have like kind of the thumbs up. Um, it's another variation of a gripping hand, I guess. But uh, also kind of like another slightly more relaxed version. So this one's like a tighter grip and this one is a little bit more open. So good selection of hands, but just not as many as his brothers. So the lack of hands is one thing, but I think Donatello's face sculpts and head sculpts kind of make up for it. His expressions are great. This is heavy Playmates inspiration once again, if I had to guess. I think Mezco's just doing kind of like Playmates inspired Easter eggs with these expressions out of the gate. But uh, yeah, wide um, open gritted teeth on both sides of the mouth with it kind of like shut in the middle. That's straight up Playmates. It's a great face sculpt. I think this is uh, suitably angry for like a battle scene and uh, just looks really cool. Then we get kind of a straight face, a little more serious, kind of relaxed, maybe a little stern uh, expression on his face, which I do like. This is very well done. So this I like. He's got the big wide smirk. On the one side it doesn't look like much, but on the other side he's just like grinning real big. And I uh, did uh, put on the longer bandana piece, which just like his brothers, he has uh, the ability to swap them on and off. So if you'd rather have the shorter one, go for it. Why does he keep falling? What do I keep? He's got like a real quizzical like, eye positioning going on there like he's got one eyebrow raised if turtles have eyebrows and then he's got like you know this little smirk it's like somebody said some scientific thing to him but they were wrong and he's kind of just like i'm gonna end this guy's whole career right now watch this guys so weapon wise he does come with a lot of unique things but we'll get some of the similarities out of the way he does come with three of these little like throwing daggers that are very similar if not identical to the ones that leonardo comes with and then he also comes with the two playmates inspired weapons that michelangelo comes with he's got this little dagger as well as of course the comma both of these look great they're painted well and you know everything across the board with this set paint wise has been really nice and of course he comes with the bow staff just about as tall as the figure itself which actually a little bit taller than the figure itself which i do like Got some good coloring, good wood grain, good weathering in there. I do like the way this looks. Yeah, that definitely looks good. These hands in particular have like a nice wide grip, so the bow staff fits in there perfectly. You got no issues with that. And obviously, like it's solid, it's not gonna fall out of his hands or anything. And now for the part I'm dreading. Let's see if it fits in the little holster in the back. All right, you know what, for what it's worth, that was way easier than doing the sword sheaths. It kind of went in. You do have to like kind of twist it in a little bit just to make sure you don't catch any of the, like the random strings or threads or anything that are hanging out of there. But that's a good fit. Once again, snug, not going anywhere. And look at him. He's like, huh, you probably thought that was going to be tough. <laughs> You're so stupid. Something cool I will point out about Donatello's belt. He does have the three little tiny loops on the back that do fit his uh, little daggers very nicely. So that is cool. So one of his unique accessories that he gets is this like hand blaster thing that you can just put over his wrist. So basically the easiest way I've found to put it on is you just put one of the hands around the handle of this thing first and then you slide it up the arm and plug the arm in. Now mine isn't even fully plugged into the wrist as you can see. It's kind of held in place by that elastic but Either way, it just kind of looks good. I don't know how difficult it would be to actually like shove it the whole way onto the peg. But I mean, with the way it is right now, it's not going anywhere. And I like the way it looks, it's cool. Now this is kind of a throwback to the original Mirage comics. And we got this accessory before with uh, the NECA 
Fugitoid, I believe. And right now I have that on my Cartoon Donatello. So let me take a look. So this is the NECA Cartoon Donatello, and this actually is a piece from the Mirage Comics Fugitoid. And I put this on him just because it's a cool piece of tech. I know it's technically supposed to go with like the Mirage Comic Turtles, but I like the way it looks on the Toon ones. They got very similar styles. So you can see here, like these are very, very, very similar. Um, I believe this is a direct inspiration for this, this device from the comics. And um, you can see that Mezco opted to do a very realistic version of it while NECA did a very comic based version of it. I think they're both great and they both have a good place in anybody's collection if you're into this kind of stuff. If you want hyper realistic or hyper stylized, you got your choice right here. I'm just now seeing that this piece actually hinges too. So you can position this where you want as like kind of a knuckle guard or, you know, have it down beneath his hand while he's holding on to the handle thing. Pretty cool. He's also got this pair of goggles. It's, uh, it's really cool. It's actually adjustable too, so you can kind of swivel them on the uh, hinges around the strap there. So I like this a lot. That's not bad. A little night vision or something. And you can obviously just like pull them up over his eyes too if you kind of want to just have them resting on his head. I put them like underneath the bandana. You could probably do it the other way too. I'm not sure. So in a lot of ways, this is like a very modern kind of recent interpretation of Donatello. It was like within the last, I want to say 10 years, probably like since the Michael Bay movie where they started loading them up with all kinds of like technology as just a part of his default design. Now we've always seen like in the cartoons and the movies and stuff, Donatello was always like, you know, the smart guy inventing stuff and always had this kind of stuff around, but he didn't necessarily just wear it all the time. But recently, like you've started seeing designs where he's got all kinds of tech on him pretty much constantly. Like the Michael Bay ones, like I said before, are kind of notorious for that. And I think maybe leaned a little too heavy into that, like way too heavy. But if that's a look you like, you do have that as a possibility here for, um, you know, your Mezco figure. So do whatever you want with that. I'm probably not going to keep these on the figure for long, but it's great to have them and they do look really, really nice when they are on the figure. He also comes with the same effect piece as Leonardo, where he's like throwing the three um, blades, but he doesn't have that flat hand that Leonardo has. So it kind of looks a little weird with him like holding it. Like it looks like he's, I don't know, like just something about the way they did it with Leonardo looks better. It's cool to have another one of these pieces, I guess, but like I said with Leonardo, I probably won't have much use for it, but it is a nicely done little accessory. So now we start getting to like the little accessories where I'm just looking at them, I'm like, I don't know what I'm even gonna do with these. You got this little like impact thing, like just, it's cool, but it's kind of the same as when I was talking about the Mezco Superman, where you had those things that went over his fists that just, they look like motion effects, but I don't know, like, it's probably cool for, you know, some people who want to make it look like he's like, you know, bashing somebody in the face with the end of his bow staff or something. Probably not much use for this, um, for me, personally. So this one's definitely better. I like this one a lot. This is like a swooshing effect with like a little impact piece right there. And the way it is, is like the bow staff plugs into the end of it. So by the time you get to the impact, the bow has already passed by, making it look like the bow is like moving much faster and the impact is like almost taking a second to register. I think that's cool. Like, it just adds a cool sense of motion. Again, probably won't use this for my displays, but of the two effect pieces that Donatello comes with for his bow staff, this is definitely the highlight for me. And you can have it like on an upward momentum or like downward if you're swinging down at somebody. But yeah, this is cool. So as far as the cloth goods, cause once again, you know, Mezco, he gets uh, like a light brown beige version of like that Return of the Jedi kind of cloak that Leonardo came with. This is actually more similar to the color of the one that Leonardo wore in that CG movie. So I guess there's no rule that says I can't switch them. Although this does have a cutaway for Donatello's like bow holster to be able to stick out of. And uh, I forgot to actually mention that Leonardo's had a split in the back too. So you could stick his swords like kind of through the cloth and you know, if you wanted to have him able to reach his swords through the cloak, you could do that. But anyway, let's see what this looks like on Donatello. So here's how it looks on him. It's pretty cool. It actually rests off center. So it's like one side of it is more open than the other. And he's got kind of like this pointed hooded piece. Um, not sure how I feel about the split thing in the back because you can't really get it over the entire bow staff holster. I mean, you'll still be able to slide the staff through there and have it over his shoulder. Just the other part of it will be underneath the uh, cloak. But I do think that like because of the way that sits on the holster itself, it might push the hood up a little too far. I'm gonna see what it looks like without that sliding through there. All right, so when you're not sticking the holster through the slit thing in the back, I think the cloak overall does fit better. It has a cool texture to it too. It's a little rough. Um, I struggle to think of what to like compare it to, but it does feel like it's worn and kind of a little more tattered compared to, 
you know, kind of the cleaner feel of like Leonardo's or Michelangelo's soft goods. Uh, once again, will I ever use this? Probably not, but because it's Mezco, you need soft goods. And um, for what it's worth, they are well done. So a little overview on Donatello. I really like him, as if that's some kind of a huge surprise. Um, he has a lot of the similarities to Michelangelo and Leonardo that we talked about, but um, I like the unique skin tone and like body shape that he has. His accessories are cool. Like a lot of the motion effects and impact effects, like I don't find myself using a ton of those, but the like scientific little like blaster gadget thing that goes over his arm and the goggles are pretty cool to have. I would have liked to maybe see like a couple more like just basic kind of hand tools. Um, similar to kind of like what Super 7 did with the party wagon where they had like a tool chest. I think something more like that would have been cooler for me as opposed to like just doubling up on some of the uh, other weapons that the other turtles came with. But the other accessories, like I said, you know, even though other turtles do come with them, they're well done, they're sculpted nicely, they're painted great, so you know, no issues with them. I just kind of wish there was something different. But besides that, I can't be mad at Donatello at all, and I was ready to hate that bow staff holster thing in his back, but he proved me wrong. Um, it's nowhere near as big of a pain as Leonardo's was, so I'm thankful for that. And of course, before we move on to Raphael, you know what time it is, baby. That's right. And this time, the whole little tray fits right in there, so I think we should be good. Nice. You still with me? I know it's been a long video, so thanks for, uh, you know, tagging along with me this long. Or maybe you just skipped straight to this part of the video. I don't know your life. But either way, thanks for watching, and we've saved Raphael for the end here. He's uh, the last of the four brothers, and he, where Donatello got kind of the shaft on some of the hands, he gets the most out of any of them. So he has various different gripping hands. Here's some that are kind of like a little more unique uh, hand posing, probably from manipulating the size. Here's some kind of open hands with the fingers, a little bit rested, but also looks like you can manipulate the size once again with, uh, you know, some interesting positioning in there. Once again, kind of the classic fingers splayed out, open martial arts pose or gesturing pose. You've got kind of the tighter grip, which you could look at as, uh, you know, for throwing stars or what have you. And once again, more gripping hands, just with a slightly different configuration on the fingers to be able to hold the weapon slightly differently. As far as head sculpt go, Raphael basically has three different degrees of anger on three different head sculpts. Not a lot of um, emotional variety for our man Raphael, but uh, they all do look very nice. This is the one that came out of box on him. Gritted teeth, looking real mad. From this profile, very much reminiscent of the IDW issue number one kind of artwork. I love this, I think it's great. Here's another variety, once again, as uh, with all four of the brothers, he has the long bandana attachment as well, so if you prefer that, you can put that right on there. So this is kind of just like a more like relaxed, angry, maybe he's just sitting around thinking about being mad, and then he's like, I can't wait till I get freaking really mad. And here he is at his angriest, most uncontrollable, just screaming fit of rage. I like this a lot. All three of these Raphael heads remind me of like various Playmates kind of inspired figures just with the big teeth and the big exaggerated expressions and everything. All really cool. I like them. As weapons go, you do get two of these Tonfa nightstick type things. Nicely molded, nice detail. I believe these are the weapons that I've seen him use. There's like a few one-off kind of flashback comics in the old um, Mirage series. But I believe he also uses these in Rise of the TMNT, the cartoon. So if you want to replicate that, you have that option here. These are very nice and they both... I believe are identical as far as I can tell. There may be slight differences, but like I said, great sculpting, great paint. These look good. Obviously you get Raphael's signature sigh, and these are about as dented and dirty and beat up as you would expect Raphael's sigh to be, since you know he goes around pretty much fighting all the time. A lot of great paint work, a lot of great detail work on these. These are definitely, I mean, they're among the smaller size in my collection, I believe, but they are also very, very well detailed. Obviously, you can see a lot of like dents and dings in them. Even kind of the handle has like little scratches and dents in them. Like these sides have seen a lot of action, done a lot of stabbing. But yeah, as I say, these are not the largest size in my uh, collection. In fact, I think even like the original Playmate size might actually be bigger than these as far as like the length of the main middle blade there. And I'm not saying size is everything, you know what I'm saying? But like these do look great and uh, they fit the Mezco aesthetic really nicely. Comes with a classic Playmates weapon here, the trowel. 
Just kidding, it's not a trowel, it's like some kind of a dagger, but it's definitely really, really nicely painted. I like the addition of this little, not quite jewel thing they got going on here. I don't know what that is all about, but it's like an extension of the handle that like kind of covers the back part of the blade there. Looks really good. I think, once again, the paint on these is exceptional. You got the scratches and everything going into them. Looks great. And last but not least, you get three of these little four-point shuriken throwing stars. So, these are loose, they're very small, just like some of the other, you know, throwing weapons that we've seen come of the other turtles. I do like them, they're nicely done, but they're absolutely gonna go back in the box or I'm gonna lose them. This, on the other hand, I think is probably a little more practical. This is, once again, it's a kind of an effect piece with the throwing stars implemented into it. Like, you can put this in his hand and he'll look like he's just whipping throwing stars at every foot soldier he comes across. So that's a possibility for you if you wanna have him look like he's throwing the stars. These do look really nice. Just like I said about the other motion effects, probably not gonna be something that I really keep around for long on the figure, but this is definitely cool and it's worth kind of showing off because, yeah. You can get a lot of cool like photography or something with these, I think. Here's a couple different hand configurations here. Um, I just picked two different hands and saw how each of the side looked in them. And I do like this quite a bit. I mean, obviously, depending on the hands you use, you're going to be able to get some different poses for the size. And it's going to look pretty nice, I think, no matter what you choose to do with it. And here, he's just kind of gone insane. I will say, when you move the size from like one hand to the other, just be careful because, as I mentioned, they are small. They're also pretty thin. They don't feel like particularly fragile, but I also wouldn't want you to break them if you're like messing with them too much. Uh, like I said before, with the hands, they are like a softer, more rubbery plastic, so they can be manipulated a little easier than the size themselves can. So make sure if you're like trying to switch the size in and out of like the figure's hands or something, try and do it by manipulating the fingers themselves because they got a little more give than the actual like weapon does. So, just something to be aware of. And if Raphael decides he wants to take a trip down to Cobb County, Georgia, you know the rest. He's got the tonfa, they're looking good, the nightsticks. Um, once again, just like the Psy, you can manipulate them to fit in the hands a few different ways, however you want to display them. Definitely cool. I like it. And then I knocked him over. As you can also see, the Psy do fit in the two little loops in the front of his belt. Like I say, you know, when you put them in there, they will fit nice and snug, so like they're not going to fall out or anything, they're not loose at all. But just be aware that they're sticking down like in front of his legs. So if you try and bend the leg up and the point of the blade is sticking down, I wouldn't want you to like break the side or like bend it or anything like that. So once again, just, you know, be careful with your kind of ridiculously expensive figure. And if you want, you can store the uh, throwing stars in this back little like pocket part of his belt, but it's just it's just, well, it's exactly that. It's a pocket. It's not like meant to really hold them in place that much. So they are very loose in there. So I'm probably just going to take these out and put them right back in the box so I don't lose them. And with the classic Playmates dagger there, definitely cool. I like that weapon a lot, actually. I've always liked these extra little Playmates weapons. So it's cool to see them done some serious justice in this Mezco set where they all got really nice paint and really good weathering and all that kind of stuff. Definitely cool. Love it. And also on the effects side of things, he does have these little like impact slash motion effects that you can put into his like the tips of his uh, his side there. I would be slightly concerned that maybe that's a little too much weight to leave on there for too long. Like they are lightweight, but I just like I said, you know, like I've been saying this whole time, the side does feel a little bit more fragile than the rest of the weapons, just down to how thin it is. So I wouldn't want to leave the sun here for too long, but it doesn't really look bad. So it comes with two of these end piece effects, but also like a motion effect to have it look like he's throwing the Psy, which I do like. It's kind of a cool, interesting little effect. So, you know, have him throwing his Psy like at something. I got him with like his most outraged face on, like he's throwing his Psy at his freaking computer screen. Like he's like a toy YouTuber about to go on a rant about Hasbro doing a live stream or whatever. And for what it's worth, if you wanted to, you could probably stick one of the Tonfas in this little like loop thing on the back of his belt. So. I like that you can store it. I wish maybe that there was like a second one instead of this little pocket thing because that's kind of, like I said before, it's kind of useless because the stars will just fall out of it. But having two of them there side by side for the two Tonfas would have been cool. Or even like a throwback to the original Playmates and have just a pocket that goes, like it doesn't have a bottom to it. It's just kind of like a strap across so you could like put that weapon in there like the old Playmates figure used to be able to. And Super 7 has that too because they just replicated the Playmates design. But that would have been a cool little nod. But either way, yeah, I think two of these would have been better than this thing here. But that's just a minor gripe. Not even a gripe, it's just like kind of an observation, really. It's soft goods time. It's, it's time for soft goods, everyone. You know, it's Mesco. Let's go.
All right, so like out of all the soft goods that come with these turtles, this is definitely the one that I would consider like the best. Like I would definitely, out of any of the ones that I would consider maybe displaying the turtle with, this would be the one. Cause this is just such a classic, you know, you've seen this in the movie, you've seen this on a cartoon, you've seen like a lot of versions of Raphael in particular, always kind of do the overcoat and the hat thing. Uh, it's a nice coat. There's two snaps right here and here, as well as this, um, you know, strap that goes around the whole um, body of the figure, as well as the strap that goes around the back and comes around the front and buckles, um, you know, just fastens basically right there. And the whole thing is wired too, by the way. So like once you pose it, you can manipulate it however you want, or you can leave it hanging at the sides. If you just want to leave the coat snapped or unsnapped, it's up to you. The hat underneath actually has a little peg. So when you take off the back of the bandana, you can just peg the hat right into that same hole there. There he is with the hat. Perfect disguise. Now he just looks like a regular man. Completely inconspicuous. Nothing that stands out about this guy at all. Totally great. Totally passable as a human being. So my final thoughts on Raphael. I really like him, to the surprise of no one. He's um, a little stockier than Donatello and Michelangelo. He's, I believe, maybe even a little stockier than Leonardo. I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to like look closer when they're all four in the same area here. The one minor little thing I can say about him is the sides are pretty, I don't want to say fragile or brittle because that makes it seem like they could just snap, you know, with, a, with no notice, like just from regular, like messing with them a little bit. But they, uh, you know, I would say just definitely use care when you're messing with the size and putting them into the hands and all that kind of stuff. But the level of detail is gorgeous, just like his brothers. Whether you love Mesco or hate them, you can't tell me they don't put the time and the effort in to detail their figures, and these are just great examples of that. And like I said before, their bread and butter has kind of always been like the soft goods and everything, and the ones that they included with these turtles, you know, for the most part, they're pretty good. There's that one kind of like black blanket sheet ripped up cape thing that comes with this set that I'm not really even sure what that is but you know Michelangelo's hoodie's great Leonardo's cloak is good Donatello's is not like terrible it's just not something I'm probably going to use but Raphael's like coat and hat that's come on man that's classic TMNT kind of similar to what I said about Leonardo I would have liked maybe one head with like a little different expression this could pass for kind of like anger or also like maniacal laughter so I guess you could like kind of say this is like a more humorous expression but you know kind of like i pointed out with leonardo like yeah Raphael's always mad and angry at everything but he's also a teenager which means he also likes having fun just you know enjoying stupid video games or like shows or whatever the case so i would have liked at least one kind of maybe you know happy head like i said this could be you know he's laughing but it looks more like he's laughing at the idea of just like how badly he's gonna hurt somebody so now you know what it's time for that's right put him in the red bin and yeah i guess it's technically more of a pink than a red but this is the best i got in this set so we'll deal with it all right so the tray barely fit in there so we're uh gonna make it oh yeah we got it all good oh what you thought we were done because we talked about all four turtles no we still got a bunch of common accessories to go across all of them so you get two slices of pepperoni pizza and believe it or not they are actually like different pieces like they're not just the same one released twice you can tell by the positioning of the pepperoni as i drop that one but it looks like they actually fit together sort of because of the way that back pepperoni is cut so yeah that's definitely a cool detail and then you get two more slices of pepperoni pizza but these have like the cheese dripping out like i think it's meant to be like held upright by the turtle as he's like putting this part in his mouth or something and uh this is honestly just making me hungry also it's making me realize do you know how much freaking 12th scale pizza I have. Like every freaking version of the Ninja Turtles comes with it. We got, of course, four of the turtle communicators, which if you watch Yimbo's review, you know how excited he got when you realize you can pull them open, the antennas pop out the sides. Look at that, now they're activated, and then boom, deactivated. Just pop it closed and you're good to go. Some nice detail and stuff on the back too. It's like nice and weathered. Got a lot of like um, indentations and stuff in the back. Very mechanical, shell design, I love it. Let's open that again, just watch those uh, antennas come out. Boom. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then we also have this piece here with the little hook sticking out the back end of it. It's just a shell design on both sides, but if you push up on the hook, you get a grappling hook. How about that? But what good is a grappling hook if you don't have anything to attach it to? So you do get this little hook, this actual little hook that clips on here. But once you get it in there, it links up nicely. And uh, you know, the string is relatively long, so if you put this on something, you can have the turtle like very easily and you know, it kind of loosens up once you pull it back out. So push it back in. But 
you could have the turtle like climbing up this thing and it would look good. Or just have it like hanging on his side like that and have him, you know, posed up like he's gonna throw it. All four of them do actually come with like belt clips to like clip this thing to it, which um, I forgot to show, but basically just they're little brown plastic pieces that just clip to the turtle's belt. You do get four of these stands, one in every uh, bandana color. So you got obviously purple, red, blue, and orange. And you also get four of these Mezco like actual stand pieces that attach to this. So if you want to display your turtles like up in the air, or if you just would feel a little bit more peace of mind by having them kind of secured down to something instead of just leaving them freestanding, that is uh, definitely something you can do. And it does come with four of these little like Mezco official bags. So, you know, you can store your figure or whatever. Um, I think most of the 112th, if not all of the 112th collective figures come with one of these. Um, I just barely use them because I'll be honest, I barely take my Mezco stuff out of the boxes. But these turtles, man, like I might put these on permanent display here. But yeah, you get four of these, pretty cool. You already know we're using the green box for the common weapons and accessories and stuff, all this. And there you go. Honestly, not too much to put in there, but that'll definitely fit. Bomb. So we got them all four together. We finally got a look at all of them. What's the overall consensus here? What do I think? Well, it's a great set. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that part of it. Um, it's definitely, uh, you know, your, your mileage is gonna vary as far as like, is it worth the asking price? All that kind of stuff. And that's, you know, every collector has that dilemma. Everybody who looks at a product and is like, oh, I'm willing to pay X amount, but that seems either too expensive or like it's, you're not getting your bang for your buck, whatever the case. You've seen all we've talked about here today. All of these little cases back here are full of all different things that you could use to make these figures like as ideal as you want them to be. Whatever you envision the TMNT to be, they can probably encapsulate that vision for you in some way. As far as minor little nitpicks I would have, um, like I mentioned before when we went over the articulation, maybe the ankle articulation could be a little bit better just to be able to get them to hit those more dynamic kind of ninja poses. Like I think you will be able to pose these pretty well, but you know, you're you're going to be pretty limited because the, uh, the foot kind of being so large gets in the way of being able to tilt upwards and you know, the leg kind of gets in the way. So uh, too many martial arts poses are probably not going to happen for you, but you can still, you know, you can make this work. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you won't be able to pose these up nicely. My only other minor critique is, like I said, the uh, expressions of the faces. I would have liked to have seen uh, kind of a variety of um, emotions across maybe each turtle. And I think Donatello is the most well-balanced. Well, actually, Donnie and Mikey have um, the most wide range of emotion. Donatello kind of has like, you know, a more content face, a happier kind of like sarcastic face and an angry face. And Michelangelo has like this kind of like battle ready one, a scared one and a happy one. But like Raphael just has three degrees of anger and Leonardo just has like you know, anger slash stern leadership face. Would have been nice to get like a little range of expressions, I guess, but that's, you know, don't listen to me. I'm just minor nitpicks at this point. In an ideal world, it would have been nice to get one head for each of these three turtles with a red headband. So if you want to do the whole like Mirage comics, all red kind of old school vibe, that would have been great to see, but I personally don't miss it. And in fact, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Mezco just redo this set with all red headbands and then just like add in some different accessories or something so people can double dip, which I won't be doing. I hope I don't have to come back to this part of the video and call myself a liar. But overall, is this like the greatest set of Ninja Turtle figures ever? Uh, there's a strong argument for that. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that they're my personal favorites. I'm gonna need some time with them, but I mean, they're definitely really, really good. Um, like I said, I don't have anything in particular bad to say about any of them, except for, like I said, Leonardo's sheets going into the back thing there. That was a pain. Other than that, I can't really say much negative about these. Um, these are very high in the ranks as far as my favorite um, Mezco figures. Um, like I said, you know, probably my favorite up until now was the first Dark Knight Returns Frank Miller Batman, and that's like the first figure they made in this series. And they've come a long way since then, but nothing has ever really overtaken that one figure for me. But I think now we've finally dethroned it. So yeah, the best Mezco figures, I think you're probably onto something if you say that. Uh, the best Turtles figures, well, it depends on what you're looking for. But I can see anybody making an argument for that when they're talking about these. What do you think? Are these the best? Are these, you know, not even on your radar? Did you get them? Did you not get them? Let's talk. My name's Captain McKay. This has been too long. I'm going to get you out of here. Thank you for watching. There's some other stuff nearby that you can, you know, watch if you want. Hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Later on.